Hello there. Emmanuel Macron has warned that the invisible enemy could cause the EU to fail. And what was the UK's response yesterday to the second round of the Brexit trade talks? Firstly, please give this video a like to give my channel a boost and I'm always uploading new videos so please do check back daily. Now according to the French President Emmanuel Macron, unless the wealthier northern states dip into their pockets and give the money to the southern states that have been hit the hardest by the invisible enemy, then there won't be a single market left for those northern states to profit from anymore. As you'll know, at the moment, the only financial aid available to the likes of Italy and Spain are loans, mainly from the European Stability Mechanism, and those loans have to be repaid by the countries that borrow the money. That's just more loans on already overly stretched economies inside the Eurozone, and the Eurozone economy is now itself expected to shrink by 15% this year. And as far as Italy is concerned, this line of credit is just a pointless offer that will not help them. And now the French president has stepped in saying that these loans will not resolve the underlying issues, and that if a part of Europe is allowed to fail, then the whole of Europe will fail. And as far as he's concerned, without mutualising the cost of protecting the likes of Italy across the whole bloc and getting everyone to pay, then our Europe, as he puts it, has no future. And his country also has an interest in this happening, as France's debt-to-GDP ratio is expected to rise significantly higher in the future. So getting Germany to help foot the bill would be a nice political move for Macron. But those richer states, like Germany and the Netherlands, are still not shifting their position and it might now be too late to do much about it anyway, as that sort of mechanism would, I believe, need changes to the legal structure of the Eurozone as well as changes in German law as well. And the French boss of the European Central Bank, or ECB, Christine Lagarde, has also stepped in and warned that Brussels could end up doing too little too late. While in March it transpires that one third of the total ECB bond purchases were for Italian debt. But the Italian bond yields are still rising, meaning prices are falling, as sellers queue up to offload Italian debt that the ECB then has to swallow to try and keep the whole show on the road. This has so far worked to a degree and these actions have prevented Italian bonds from being downgraded by the credit rating agencies into the junk bond status, a position that Italy's been hovering in for quite a while. But the rating agency Standard & Poor did say that it could junk Italian bonds if its public debt levels failed to start a downward trend in the next three years. And the chances of that happening are zilch. There's only one way Italian debt will now go, and some are predicting it could reach circa 175% of GDP. So junk bond status for Italy can't be far off, and when that happens, the ECB won't be able to buy them. Or should I say, those bonds would be ineligible for ECB purchase. And according to the experts, this eventually puts the strain on the German central bank the Bundesbank, through the complex web that holds the Eurozone central banking system together. And this is where it gets a bit interesting. Because the people of Germany might not be happy with that, and there are now also legal concerns. And according to a Reuters report, there is a group of German academics regularly challenging the ECB in the courts, which could cause problems as it seems that the ECB has been bending and twisting many of its own rules to destruction. But it's not alone in that. 
Just about all the larger central banks now appear to be engaged in buying their own country's debt and company debt, and they might even have to start replacing bad debt with good money from government bonds, in other words, paying top dollar for garbage. I believe that is better known as qualitative easing, as opposed to quantitative easing where good debt was replaced with good money to ease liquidity. What we're now doing is buying junk with good money to keep the cash flowing. But unlike other central banks, the ECB does not have a single government stood behind it and supporting it. And I further hear that the German Constitutional Court is due to give a ruling on May the 5th on how much support the Bundesbank can give to the ECB. And if that support is limited, that could, or probably will, limit the ECB's ability to keep propping up the Eurozone bond markets. Or more simply, the ECB would not be able to fulfil a central bank's duty of being lender of last resort. The Eurozone would have no lender of last resort. Things are going to be far from pretty in the Eurozone, if there's one left soon, that is. Now to the Brexit negotiations and the UK response to the second round of talks that ended yesterday. Now in last night's video I talked about the disappointment expressed by the EU chief Brexit negotiator Michel Barnier over what had been achieved. He was very unhappy that we hadn't rolled over on continued unfettered access to our waters for EU fishing vessels, and that the UK wouldn't agree to be controlled by EU law within a level playing field, covering just about every aspect of our lives. I regret that the United Kingdom refused to engage seriously on a number of fundamental issues, he said. But the UK government spokesman's statement puts a much sunnier light on it. Well, for Brexiteers anyway. This was a full and constructive negotiating round conducted remotely by video conference and with a full range of discussions across all the issues on the basis of the extensive legal texts provided by both sides in recent weeks. However, limited progress was made in bridging the gaps between us and the EU. And I have to say that looking at the EU demands, there jolly well should be some areas where limited progress was made. And the statement went on to say that There was some promising convergence in the core areas of a free trade agreement. And that covered areas like trading goods and services, energy, transport and civil nuclear cooperation. But that we regret, however, that the detail of the EU's offer on goods trade falls well short of recent precedent in FTAs it has agreed with other sovereign countries. This considerably reduces the practical value of the zero-tariff, zero-quota aspiration we both share. Simply put, the EU wants to impose a totally <laughs> deal on the UK. Now yesterday, Michel Barnier said that without a comprehensive level playing field, then there could be no meaningful trade deal. On this, the UK statement said, We will not make progress on the so-called level playing field and the governance provisions until the EU drops its insistence on imposing conditions on the UK which are not found in the EU's other trade agreements and which do not take account of the fact that we have left the EU as an independent state. Good. A nice and clear red line. We won't be taking instructions from Brussels. Barnier also said yesterday that there could be no meaningful deal unless we adhered to the current common fisheries policy quotas so that the EU fishing vessels could carry on plundering UK waters. And on this, another clear UK red line was stated. On fisheries, the EU's mandate appears to require us to accept a continuance of the current quotas agreed under the common fisheries policy. We will only be able to make progress here on the basis of the reality that the UK will have the right to control access to its waters at the end of this year. Marvellous! 
and the UK side ended by saying that we now need to move forward in a constructive manner and that the UK is committed to a free trade agreement as the central part of any trade deal. We look forward to negotiating constructively in the next round, beginning on the 11th of May, and to finding a balanced overall solution which reflects the political realities on both sides. I love it. Barnier called us foot-draggers, and we come back with a nice sting in the tail, talking about needing to move forward in a constructive fashion and being balanced and recognising the realities of the situation. And the realities are that the EU is not in a good place at the moment and far from in the position of power that it wants to be in. No wonder the general consensus was that Barnier looked a bit rattled yesterday. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug, with my mug on it. So what do you think about all of this? Please share and comment, and thank you for watching.